think a good way to connect to uh, the mathematical side um, of your brain is to find a hobby or something that you are passionate about and are willing to, to tinker with. Some people like playing mathematically themed puzzles like Sudoku puzzles are very popular. As a kid, I liked playing with computer games um, and logic puzzles. If you like um, fixing up old machinery or something, the challenge of, of making some, some broken piece of machinery work, that kind of problem solving that, that shows up in that, it, it actually is, is very parallel to mathematical thinking. If you're a cook and you're, you're following a recipe and uh, the recipe is for four people, but one day you have to cook for six people um, and you have to change um, all, all the uh, amounts of ingredients. Or maybe um, the, the, the recipe requires you to cook something for you know, for half or an hour and a half, but you only have an hour. That's a mathematical problem. You know, how, how, uh, how can you use resources most efficiently? I think we bump up against mathematics all the time. Now, often you can kind of wing it. You can just, um, an experienced chef may have some rules of thumb, but um, having uh, some mathematical training um, can help you, um, you know, avoid a disaster, I think. Um, well, at least give you some sort of uh, first approximation as to how to adapt to an unex unexpected situation. I think we could, we could all play a little bit more with trying little tasks first before moving on to, to, to big, high-stakes uh, tasks. I think mathematics is just an extreme example where it doesn't matter how many times you fail to solve a little math problem. It, it, there's no real penalty other than wasted time. But it's not even really a, a, a waste, you know, as long as you learn something from it. The more you expose yourself to um, doing tasks in a, a fun, challenging way and, and enjoying just the challenge. Um, you know, I, I enjoy the challenge of assembling furniture, um, you know, um, from very unreadable instructions. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to do it for a living or anything, but almost anything in real life can be, can be turned into a little, a little problem. And, uh, you know, finding situations in life where the stakes are low, it's okay if you screw up, you just start over. And just getting to a mindset where... Um, the goal is not necessarily to solve the problem quickly or efficiently, but to enjoy yourself and to, to draw lessons from it. One of the basic techniques in mathematics is uh, if you have a complicated problem, you isolate a, a, um, a simpler version of the problem, solve that first, um, and then once you know how to solve various simpler subcases of the problem, try to put them back together again and, and solve the full problem. Just to give you one example from my own personal experience, um, I once had to put up um, some curtains um, on, on, um, on one of my windows in my house. And you have to stand on a chair and there's, a, there's this heavy rod and there's a bunch of, of curtain rings and there's a heavy curtain. But maybe because of my mathematical training, um, the way I approached this was um, I first tried to assemble the curtain on, um, on the ground. And then um, I practiced you know, um, how to assemble each piece um, on the chair. So I, I, would, I would take just the rod and see how to put the rod um, on, on, on the hooks and how to put the curtain on the rod. And only after I had practiced each individual um, um, piece of the problem would I try to put it all together. That took longer than if I had tried to, to assemble the, uh, the, the curtain directly. But I'm pretty sure if I tried it directly, I would have messed up one or two of, of, of the stages. Um, and I, I think um, this process was actually better in the end. So is mathematics a creative subject? Uh, definitely. Um, when you uh, see mathematics in a school context, it's often presented in a somewhat dry manner that there's certain recipes that you have to uh, follow in order to solve a problem. And if you deviate, then uh, you get your marks deducted or something. But uh, when you're a research mathematician, um, you, know, you are solving problems that standard techniques don't quite apply. Um, because it's so abstract and not necessarily tethered to reality, it, it allows you to be very creative and very, very flexible. You know, in the real world, you may have a problem where you have, a, say, some finite number of resources. You only have X amount of dollars to throw at a problem. You may only have so much time. But in mathematics, you can change the parameters. Um, you may say, okay, what if I had a billion dollars? Could I solve this problem? Uh, or what if I had an infinite amount of manpower? It gives you a lot of flexibility to, um, to change the problem um, into one that maybe you can solve first. And then um, you can then from there go back to, to, to solve the actual problem. And that's a freedom that you just don't have in the real world. You, you, can't, uh, you can't just say, oh, I, before I, 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 I solve this problem, can I first have a billion dollars to, to, to experiment? Um, yeah, the abstraction that mathematics has affords it a lot of creative freedom.
many people, they, uh, they had a problem to solve and they basically did mathematics even without knowing that they, they did mathematics. There's one story I quite like. Um, so there was this mathematician named Johannes Kepler in the uh, 17th century. And he once had to purchase wine for, I think, his daughter's wedding. And the way that um, um, the wine merchants would price these barrels was that there was a little bunghole in the middle of the barrel and there would be this stick. And they would poke the stick through the, bar- through the hole to the opposite corner of the, uh, the barrel and measure the, the length. And based on that length, uh, they would say, okay, this, this is you know, how many ducats or whatever worth of, of, of wine. When Kepler saw this, he was amazed. You know, I mean, normally you would think that if you want to measure how much wine there is in a barrel, you'd have to, to measure how many gallons fill it up or something. And this was a very quick way. And for these wine merchants, it, it, it worked apparently. Um, and they couldn't explain why it worked. They just empirically worked out what lengths of the stick corresponded to how much, what quantity of wine. Um, so Kepler got very intrigued and he, um, he approached the problem mathematically. He considered wine barrels of various widths and heights and computed these lengths of the sticks and their volumes. And he did indeed see that there was actually this very nice relationship. The barrels that were made in Austria, they were all roughly the same shape. And it turned out that, that if you made the barrel you know, 5% narrower or 5% wider, the relationship between volume and, um, and the length of the stick was roughly the same. The dependence of volume on, um, on the shape of the barrel was, was actually at near local maximum. Local maximum refers to a situation in which any small change in the unknown variables, in this case, the shape of the barrel, would lead to a reduction in the quantity being studied, which in this case is the volume of the barrel. And so small changes in the shape did not actually make um, uh, big changes in the volume. And in fact, Kepler developed some of the early um, uh, tools of calculus in order to solve this problem. And it was actually quite important for later development of mathematics. So th- there's a lot of, of, of um, mathematical problems that we just encounter in our everyday lives. Um, and we often just have to solve them with or without formal mathematical training. But once you have the training, you can, you can explain why these funny tricks um, that people have in their various professions actually work. So what are some components of practical mathematical thinking? Uh, Well, they include experimentation, a willingness to fail, proactive deconstruction, and remembering sometimes to zoom out, apply abstraction, choose a plan of action, and then act accordingly. So keep an eye on the big picture.